Okay, someone tell me, tell me what gives you flow? Some, something weird, different. Yes, oh, you're only, oh, yes, what gives you flow? Uh, pruning trees. What? Pruning trees. Oh, I can understand that. Can anyone understand pruning trees? Do you leave the tree standing as well? <laughs> relationship and the stock has perfect obedience and that's what you that okay which could you flow the obedience or lack of obedience or lack of obedience approaching obedience 
The exercise, the kind of give and take, right? Yeah. Of, with, between you and your trainee, dog trainee. This is a child in flow. Look at this child as a children's house child in France, sewing a button on a little velveteen bag. Look at the backlight that we put in there to make flow a little bit more apparent. <laughs> But look at the concentration. Look at the axis, the axis of concentration. See, right down the middle, I and axis. Now, the reason why I oh, I have one more picture. This is of an adolescent fall. Yeah, yeah, they can concentrate deeply. Hands on. Pardon me. You know that? For, you know where he lives, Mexico City. Do you know the Do you know the student? No. Oh, but you. Why are you laughing? Yeah, they do. They have flow. They can have big time flow, especially when their work is physical. Okay, what I usually say at this point in my talk, it's not over yet, and my, my computer is migrating again. But what I usually say at this time in my talk, ladies and gentlemen, what if you send your adolescent to a school where they experience flow, where they have the engagement through choice, through body, through wanting to be with adults, wanting to be with other adolescents, they have even a social flow. This is the key to a Montessori adolescent program, to engage the adolescent. To engage the adolescent, and I gave you, because I was paid, not paid to do it exactly, but I, did, I gave you a secret, a Montessori secret, that this engagement is natural, it occurs at all ages, and you've got a chance to experience it from the adult point of view because you experienced your flow in relation to how a, an adolescent might feel their flow. What gives you flow is the whole technique in the, in the adolescent, with the adolescent stage I'm going to show you one other aspect of flow for the, for the elementary child because John told me to, to mention something about the transition from, from elementary to adolescence. This is an elementary child in the state of flow. What's he contemplating? The universe, the cosmos. And so when you walk into the lower elementary classrooms at this school, this, this child finds the basis of all learning and the, and the Big Bang. The Big Bang includes all the materials of create, creation. Yes, there is an aspect of creation in Montessori, but not creationism. It's an aspect that somehow there's a constructive force in the world that puts it together for us. That's a positive view. I don't think it's a fairy tale, and I don't think elementary children think it's a fairy tale. I don't think that adolescents lose it if you can capture this flow in relation to the big picture. In the beginning, before your mother was born, before your father was born, before there were people walking on earth, before there was an earth, before there was a solar system, before there was a galaxy, before there was... Okay, doesn't it raise your imagination a little bit? A six-year-old gets pretty turned on by that, really. And so if you think, close your eyes, trust me, if you take an imaginative exercise like polka dots floating in this auditorium, out the, out the, outside of the, moving outside of the building, floating into the general area of Connecticut, in the general northeastern part of the space, into the global space of the a atmosphere and so forth, into, into the universe. Did you see those polka dots go out there? An, 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 an elementary child can do that very easily. That produces flow when you raise the imagination, when you arouse the imagination. That, that produces flow. And it's exciting, uncontrollably exciting. And if you watch the teachers tell the story of the universe at age six, why die, engaged, then any detail from that story, whether it's life on Earth, or whether it's the first, if there is trust, any, any detail from that story, 
becomes a point of, of when it becomes a point of interest in the context of the universe that produces flow. Those children have just finished their flow experience and they're just very proud. Another aspect that produces flow is the understanding of the relationships between land, water, air, animals and plants, the natural world. Now keep this, this, these images in mind. Not the people images, not the individual picture images, but this whole image of interdependency. You see the black dot? Right here? That's where the natural world touches the human world. How do you experience that? How does a young person experience this powerful notion that the human world is integral to his life, that it's all the people around him, all the technology, all the uh, uh, telecommunications, whatever. How does that human world relate to the natural world? And what we, what we think is that many times our adolescents are trapped in the human world. We can't get out. And what we have to do is open the door and go through the keyhole, or no, oh no, whoops, I got my metaphors messed up. To go through the keyhole into the natural world, certain kinds of conditions need to be established. And this experience of relating to the natural world in relation to the human world is a flow, flow maker. So it starts with the story of life on Earth in the elementary, an understanding of the global aspects of life on Earth, Every elementary child loves a, 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 a dinosaur. Here's the, where is the human, uh, where is the human going? Uh, particularly interesting to, to elementary children is nudity. I mean, the evolution of humans. <laughs> and there is a story, storytelling capacity. Storytelling capacity. Where we tell the story, beginning with the story of the universe, subset of which is the story of life on Earth, subset of which is the story of humans, and finally, what, what do we need as a global human place in relation to the natural world? I mean, this is all Montessori education is about for 18 years. I'm probably all going to withdraw from the program here, and <laughs> that's too simple. But you know, it's really not simple, but it is clear. We need to make these relationships clear. And emanating, you know, from those stories, are the disciplines, biology, chemistry, geology, geography, astronomy, physics, algebra, geometry, and arithmetic. Well, how is it that they come from the story? The story introduces everything. When you tell the story of the universe, it's telling the story of, the, of all the disciplines working to understand our origin. When you when, and, and when you tell the, the um, story of life on Earth, well, all life comes from the origin of life. We, we all are connected. To the origin of life. And when you're talking about the origin of humans, there is a, a history of humans on this planet that intrigue an elementary age child because we have a common source. And he might have even been an ape. Don't arrest him for that. But nevertheless, we have a common source. So we come from origins, which are shown in the, around in the storytelling. We have the emanation of the disciplines. And then where, where are we going to? Remember, what are humans for? Adolescents want to know growing up what, what they are for, but they need a network of information before they become adolescents, when they're stable enough to absorb it. So where are we going? Well, if you look on the outside, we're looking at ecological unity, uh, interconnectedness of all people, the, the erasing of boundaries, a global perspective, an interdependence, understanding of that interdependency, the keyhole from, from which you go from human reality to natural reality to a kind of reconciling of the two, which makes for a peaceful world. So I mean, here we see it again, story of the universe, coming of life on earth, coming of humans, story of man, story of language, uh, flow of civilization, classical civilization is a subset of that, um, you're, you know, Euro-centered, uh, history, American history, us now. We start from the big picture and we go down to the specific. But an elementary child by sixth grade, if this con continued relationship of networking of concepts is, is maintained, 
can also go from the key lesson of now back into the deep past. And the deeper you go in the past, guess what? When you become an adolescent, an elementary child looks to the past. This is the past. But something happens that, to adolescents. They look to the future. Why do they look to the future? Why do adolescents look to the future? That's where the adulthood lies in their eyes. Very dramatic turnaround in terms of sensitivity to knowledge. They want to know. They go from the present to the past, not from the past to the present. And if they've had a Montessori elementary education, they have deep understanding of the past. And the deeper they know the past, it's, a, it's, a deep, it's the deepest way to crave to know about the future. That's our theory. OK. You tired now? Are you, am I, uh, are you with me for a little longer? I, I have a. I started late, so I'm giving myself a little extension. We're supposed to end at seven, and we'll probably end at seven ten. Is that all right? If you want me to stop right now, no. okay. Adolescence. <clears throat> point of arrival. That that you're at this point of arrival at the adolescence. I'm going to ask you a quiz question for comprehension so far. See how you do. How is the networking of cosmic education, the telling of stories, the organizing of the disciplines going from the past to the future like a farm? Now, I think, I, I think you're on the verge of it, this gentleman right here. First thing, he has a beard and he's, you know, that's a sign of intelligence. Yes, did you have an idea? How do we go from the networking that the, that the elementary child learns, all the connections of the disciplines in relation to the Big Bang and in relation to the ecological future? We do that with, the, with these little children who are not so little by the time they're age 12. How is that network like a farm? Anyone want to take a chance? Who has not heard my answer before? Yes, yes, go ahead. Speak very loudly because everyone's waiting to hear. Well, I'm not sure confident, but Pardon me? I can't hear you. I'm not really confident, but I guess with interdependence and really seeing on a farm. All right, there's inter what's the interdependency on a farm? Um, animals, Pardon? The animals, the natural environment, how it affects Right, everything affects everything else on a farm. It's lived on a farm. Adolescent needs to live it, needs to feel it, needs to be with the adult exploring it, needs to see the improvements necessary to keep that system, those, those systems going. Any other ideas? Yes? They need the big picture to understand the significance of details. How does the farm do that? Pardon me? Life cycles. I can't hear you. Life cycles. Life cycles. Life cycles. Big life cycles on the farm. Seasons. So the farm actually has a unity overall that is basic to the natural world, but it has a human purpose. And this profoundly, if the, the, if the elementary child has experienced, it has experienced the interconnectedness of life abstractly, then there's a match, and that match produces flow. Not about labor, but actually if an adolescent knows the significance and the social and feels the social power of working on the land, it's, it's flow. It's guaranteed flow. Sometimes they have bad days, but generally speaking, it's, it's guaranteed flow. And so our concept is that the disciplines which were once rooted in the, in the stories, the great lessons, are now rooted in the study of nature. All the disciplines here, I, you probably can't read it too well, but psychology, geography, economics, business and management, everything can be found on the land. And we have another kind of nice name for this. I've had to defend this name, Pedagogy in Place. So, can someone at this time do a rendering of the song, There's a Place for Us? There's usually some but exit. Yes? Are you ready? Someone that can 
Just stand up and sing. There's a love. Come on, come on, come on. I don't have a good place. Somebody can. Okay, John. There's a place for us. Go ahead. You want? Yes. It's a place. Thank you very much, John.